Hello, and welcome to part four of our working on our, on our nice little painting here. In this episode, what I want to focus on is this meadow. Now, in our last video, episode uh, three, we really focused on the very distant uh, meadow, making sure it was nice and sunlit, and working on our little banks right here, more in the prominent foreground, as well as the reflections in our lake. And I hope you're able to tune into that one. So now we're gonna focus on our meadow. And um, I'm excited and looking forward to getting going on this. So uh, let's go ahead and jump on into it. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna use our our little fan brush. This is a Series 4 number 1 fan brush and um, these can be purchased at Rosemary and Company um, which they, they have really great uh, brushes so this little fan brush is kind of what we're going to be working on or using. So what I want to start with now is I want to go ahead and come in here. We're going to start back here close to um, our, our clump of trees here and this is all going to be a little bit in shadow. Uh, and then as we move more into this region, uh, it'll be a little more sunlit. Um, and then, of course, as we come into the most foreground region, this will all be in shadow, uh, primarily because we're going to have a, a tree, which we're not going to be able to see in this painting, but it will have overhanging branches and limbs, and that particular tree is casting a big shadow right here. So uh, I wanna go ahead and get that working right now. So we're gonna use this fan brush. I'm gonna go into my pile, and what I wanna go ahead and take is I'm gonna take um, a little bit of our green. I've got some hookers here, and uh, gonna mix a little bit of of ultramarine blue with that. This makes a real nice dark bluish green color which works really nicely for these shadow effects. And I just want to see that I've got the right color here. And I think that's probably pretty close to what I was looking for. So we're going to come through here with downward strokes. and just bring in these shadows. Now, there's not a lot of shadow here that I can paint in before it suddenly gets sunlit again, but we do have just a little bit. And grab some more color. It's going to kind of be in front of that sunlit section right there.
All right, now that we've blocked in sort of the initial um, mass grass uh, brush stroking that I wanted to kind of get kind of get put in here. Um, I'm going to come back with my, my little rigger brush here and I want to start to bring an individual, um, just individual blades of grass uh, as I go here. Um, and as I'm looking at this reference photo and right now, you know, I'm kind of seeing some shadow Kind of, kind of about right in this area here. So I'm just going to come in and bring just tiny little individual blades of grass. And start to figure out, you know, exactly where I want to have that. And it's going to kind of help with your realism here. So I'm going to go through here now and just kind of start adding these in. Of course, as you're furthest back, your, your little brush strokes are going to be a lot tinier. As you work forward, you're going to make larger, broader strokes. And that'll help to give that illusion of some depth. And it'll help to establish our value system. Right now, this painting really has one, two, three, four, five, six values to create that depth and that distance. So I'll just go through here. And as I, as I draw forward, I'll make larger, broader strokes on here. So we'll go ahead and fast forward our camera now.
So here's kind of where the rule of contrast kind of plays in. I'm coming back with my darker greens, my kind of my blue greens that I've put together here. I'm going right back over those light, those light areas, and kind of bringing them on top and in front of that. That way we have that little contrast and it seems like most folks really appreciate seeing contrast in paintings. So I'm always kind of looking for opportunities in my paintings that I can kind of introduce a little contrast. Just those little extra things that seem to make a painting really kind of stand out. Okay, so now in, in the photograph I've got here, we've got a bunch of dandelions, um, real white, poofy dandelions. It's, they're just kind of splattered throughout the meadow. So what I thought I'd do is I'm going to take my, my little fan brush here, and I'm going to find... Let's see here. Let's find this little palette knife. So I'm going to take some of my mineral spirits. So I'm going to take a little bit of the white that I have. And kind of dilute it with a little bit of color. I'm just adding a little bit of kind of green to it, but just a very slight amount. Just enough that it's not a real strong white color. And now I'm going to come through here, I'm going to test this out on my palette. Okay, I'm going to come through here now, and I just want to flick just like that, just flick a little bit of some of that white dandelion sort of sort of little splatterings all throughout. Now with my little my little extended point brush here. These are cool little brushes. Um, I got this one from Rosemary and Company, but it's a series 338 um, extended brush. It's what I use to create most of the uh, blades of grass here. But I'm gonna come back in here and pick up a little bit more of that white. And in some areas, I just want to have a little bit more prominence. Kind of larger, kind of flowers and dandelions. Just kind of create a little, just a little stroke like that.
in the reference photo, there's quite a bit right here. So that's kind of how I put together this meadow. And now that we've kind of gotten most of everything we wanted established here in the background of the foreground, we can now come through and add our big tree here. We'll add our, we can add our big overhanging tree here. And um, I'm going to do, I want to pick up, kind of grab my, uh, make a little bit of room on my palette here, and take this, take this black, this is ivory black. And I'm just going into the pure black. I'm going to take my uh, Series 7 number 16 uh, flat bristle brush here. And I'm just going to, it's going to be about right here. That's going to kind of come about like so. And that way I can just create a real quick large trunk. Then I can take my extended point brush and I can begin to sort of identify some other areas, some other branches that kind of come out, some other limbs and twigs. I'm just kind of trying to follow this photograph. It's got some got some random ones here. 
And again, a lot of this is going to get covered up anyway. Um, just by some foliage and things, but this guy right here, he kind of kind of goes straight up like this. Now we're going to lose some of this when we bring in the foliage, but I can always bring it back later. So we kind of have that. Now as I go to the other side, we have some more. I think that's going to conclude uh, part four of this video series. Um, I wanted to certainly leave off with at least establishing where our trees in the foreground are going to be. Um, on our next uh, episode, part five, which uh, should be the very last segment of this video, um, we're going to go through here and leaf these, these two large trees here in the foreground. And um, so I'll be excited to show you that. Um, but that's kind of how I like to work a meadow, and that's primarily the, uh, the, the, the important part of, uh, of part four here, is kind of showing you how I put together the foreground on the meadow. Um, it does take time, uh, specifically when you bring in the individual blades of grass. But, you know, starting off by using, uh, using your fan brush, uh, that can take care in one single swipe. That can take care um, of quite a bit of, of that illusion of, of clumps of blades of grass. Um, however, one, that's really gonna be more utilized for the under portion or underpainting portion of the meadow. Really, as you get into um, the midground and more importantly here in the foreground, um, showing those individual blades of grass just gives it that just a little bit better sense of realism um, if that's what you're looking for and it's it's quite an effective uh, process um, so you'll want to use a rigor brush or the extended point brush like I was using uh, to achieve that so I hope that was helpful I appreciate you tuning in please come on back here for uh, episode 5 I'll get working on that here pretty soon and looking forward to getting that uh, posted as well on, on my YouTube channel. So once again, if you have not already done it, please subscribe. I appreciate uh, your comments. Always happy to see what you have to say and, and love to hear what you have, your feedback. Um, happy to try to respond if you have any questions. So until next time, thanks for tuning in.